Hello everyone, welcome back. This particular video is going to focus on the electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions of haloaromatics, or we can say halobenzene derivatives. Now, what we've seen previously is that activating groups on a benzene, they direct the incoming electrophile to the ortho and the para positions. Deactivating groups, on the other hand, direct electrophilic aromatic substitution to the meta position. Halobenzenes or haloaromatics are unique in that they are deactivating groups. So the halogen is a deactivating group, but it directs the incoming electrophile to the ortho and the para positions. So they are sort of exceptional in this regard. So for example, if we consider the nitration of chlorobenzene, Again, the standard nitration conditions using nitric acid and sulfuric acid, we would expect three products, the orthonitrochlorobenzene, metanitrochlorobenzene, and paranitrochlorobenzene. Among these products, the ortho and the para product are the favored products. So these are favored in this reaction while the meta product is not favored. So that's always like the minor product in this reaction. So this is our minor product. So in this video, we're going to examine why. First, we're going to look at the deactivating effect of halobenzenes. And we will use the specific example of chlorobenzene to walk through the discussion. So if we consider any halobenzene, and using chlorobenzene as an example, we can see that there are, again, there's an inductive effect at play here. Because the halogen is an electron withdrawing group, it is more electron negative than carbons. Inductively, the halogen is going to withdraw electron density. So it is inductively electron with drawing. And so what that means is it decreases the electron density on the ring and thus it is deactivating the Ring. So the aromatic compound will undergo electrophilic aromatic substitution at a slower rate than benzene. So halogens inductively are electron withdrawing and they deactivate the ring. Now the other effect at play here is resonance because we can consider various resonance forms for haloaromatics. So if we start with chlorobenzene, so we can use the lone pair on the chlorine to draw additional resonance forms. We can start there. And so this would give us the first resonance form where we have a double bond between the chlorine and the ring carbon atom. There is a lone pair or negative charge on the ortho carbon here. And further resonance is possible here where we can push that pi bond over so we get a chlorine, double bond, lone pair, double bond here, double bond here, and negative charge. And further resonance is possible. Here we have double bond here, double bond here, double bond chlorine, two lone pairs, positive charge, negative charge, over there, the other ortho position, and then a final resonance form where the lone pair returns to chlorine and we get the aromaticity back here. So we've completed all the resonance forms. So through these resonance forms, what we see is that there are several resonance forms where there is a negative charge on a ring carbon atom. That means we are enhancing electron density on these carbon atoms. So resonance 
enhances electron density in the ring. But what happens in case of halo aromatics is that the inductive effect is dominating. Inductive effect dominates. And what that means is net, the ring is deactivated. So we have two effects here that are working in opposite directions. The inductive effect, which is trying to deactivate the ring, the resonance effect, which is trying to activate the ring or add electron density into the ring, but the inductive effect here is a predominant effect. That's the main effect. And so overall net, the ring is deactivated. And some of the reasons why the ring, the resonance effect is not as strong here can be attributed to the strength of these pi bonds that are formed because we are using lone pairs from a 3p orbital here. So the overlap doesn't really work very well. Now, so basically what that means is that the ring is deactivated. Next, we're going to look at why the ortho and the para products are favored. Now to understand the product distribution that we see in this particular reaction, where the ortho and the para isomers are favored over the meta isomer, we'll have to look at the mechanisms that lead to the formation of each of these products. So let's get started. Now, since we are talking about a nitration reaction, the electrophile is a nitronium ion. This is our electrophile. And what we're going to do is we're going to examine the mechanism for the formation of each of these possible products. So we'll start with the ortho product. And for the ortho product, we are going to draw the chlorobenzene and we have our electrophile, which is the nitronium ion. Now in the initial step of this electrophilic aromatic substitution mechanism, any of the pi bonds in this aromatic ring can attack the electrophile, which is the nitronium ion. But since we are considering the formation of an ortho product here or of the ortho product here, we are going to use one of the pi bonds that involves the ortho carbon. So this pi bond would work fine because this is between the ortho and the meta carbons. When this attack happens, it's going to give us a sigma complex where we have the hydrogen and the nitro group connected to the ortho carbon. Now, this hydrogen was always here. I just hadn't written it out. And additionally, it's going to give a positive charge at the meta carbon and the other two pi bonds are still there. And this sigma complex that we made is resonance stabilized because that positive charge is allylic. So we can move that pi bond around or we can move the electrons around. So the next resonance form that we get would have a double bond over there. The hydrogen and the nitro group are still there. Positive charge here, double bond here. And then the pi bond moves up and we are able to draw the next resonance form here where we have a double bond here, chlorine, lone pair, lone pair, positive charge on that carbon, double bond here, H and then nitro group. And now at this particular point, since we have a carbocation that's adjacent to the chlorine with lone pairs on it, we are able to draw an additional resonance form where the chlorine lone pair, one of the lone pairs on the chlorine is involved in the resonance. So we will get a positive charge on the chlorine, double bond here, double bond here, H and then nitro. So in principle, we are able to write four resonance forms 
for this ortho attack on chlorobenzene. Now we can move ahead and write similar structures for the meta attack, examine what happens when we do a meta attack. So for the meta attack, again, we would like to use a pi bond which involves the meta carbon. And the pi bond that we previously used for the ortho attack would work fine because that pi bond is between the ortho and the meta carbons. And this will now give us a sigma complex. Here we have the chlorine, double bond, double bond here. The nitro group is now connected to the meta carbon and the carbocation is on the ortho carbon. And this sigma complex is also resonance stabilized. It can do resonance. So we can write additional resonance forms where we have a positive charge here now, double bond here, H and nitro group are here. And there's more resonance possible involving the next pi bond. So we are able to write additional resonance forms. And now the positive charge is here. Now those would be all the resonance forms that we can write for the meta attack on chlorobenzene. So we can now examine the para attack where the nitration would happen at the para carbon. So for the para attack, we will start with chlorobenzene. So since we are considering the formation of the para product, I will have to use a pi bond that involves the para carbon. So I'm using this pi bond here to do the attack. And this attack is going to give us the sigma complex where the nitro group is now connected to the para carbon. That's going to give us a positive charge here, double bond here and double bond here. Now, like all of the other sigma complexes, this sigma complex is also resonance stabilized. So we are able to write a few resonance forms for this sigma complex by moving the electrons around, the pi bonds are moving. So we have H and the nitro group here, and then we can do the pi bond, double bond here, chlorine, double bond here, H and then nitro, and then the positive charge over there. And now, these are not the only resonance forms because notice that from this second resonance form, we can draw an additional resonance form where I use the lone pair on the chlorine because this positive charge, the carbocation, is on a carbon that's right next to the chlorine. So that's going to give me an additional resonance form where the chlorine is involved in the resonance. So we've got positive charge on the chlorine now. We have H and the nitro group. And we will have double bond here, double bond here. And the chlorine has a positive charge. So in principle, we are able to write four resonance forms for the sigma complex that leads to the formation of the para product. So overall now, when we survey the sigma complexes that lead to the formation of the ortho, meta, and the para products, what we notice is that the sigma complex leading to the ortho product and the sigma complex leading to the formation of the meta product, they have four resonance forms because of this additional resonance form that involves the chlorine. And this resonance form cannot be written for the meta sigma complex. And so the extra stability from the resonance form, so the extra stability 
from the resonance form explains why the ortho and the para are more favored. So this is for the ortho and the para products. That explains that why the ortho and the para products are not favored in this reaction. The meta product lacks one resonance form compared to the ortho and the para products. So overall, what we see is that the halogens, although they are deactivating in nature because the inductive effect is predominant, they are ortho para directing because the ortho attack and the para attack results in an extra stabilization for the sigma complex because of an extra resonance form that's possible. So that explains this anomaly or the exception that we see in case of halogens. I hope all of you find this discussion helpful. Bye.